Hey there, welcome to Hard Rooster Labs. In this video, I'll talk about what tools you need to begin modding for automation and what kinds of mods you can make. You might have seen my first video before, but it has since become a bit out of date, so I've delisted it and replaced it with this one here. So if you're looking for that information, you're in the right place. The second video in this series talks about the modding startup file, and that has been updated recently as well with some minor improvements. So if you're using the old file, you might want to pick up the most recent version. Here's an example of some of the things I'll cover in this video series. I have a car body with some rims and numerous fixtures I've all made as either mods or vanilla content for the game. The body is one I recently made for vanilla, and you can watch the entire series about how I made the body by clicking in the info tab in the upper right of your screen. The third video in this series is going to walk you through making this grill mod. This mod is made up of a conforming mesh and a UV mesh. What are those, you ask? A conforming mesh is a mesh like this grill that conforms to the shape of the body no matter where you put it. It will flow or follow the shape of the body. The UV mesh simply cuts the hole in the body so you can have elements of the grill, or any fixture for that matter, that sit below the surface of the body. The fourth video in this series is about exporting your mod and setting it up in Unreal Engine, and that video will be replaced soon, as soon as the bugs are worked out of the latest SDK. The fifth video is about using the workshop publishing tool, and I'll only replace that one if something has changed. In the sixth video, I'll tell you about making a bumper mod, which will introduce you to the concept of the additional mesh. An additional mesh is one that scales evenly in all directions and doesn't conform to anything. Things like my blower mod contain an additional mesh, as well as a conforming and UV mesh. You can combine the different meshes together in whatever combinations you like to create unique fixtures. The seventh video is about modding a headlight where you will be introduced to a skin mesh, which will require rigging, or what's also commonly referred to as skinning. A skin mesh is intended to be used as below surface fixed objects in conjunction with conforming meshes and UV meshes. The most obvious example of this is headlights, where you have a conforming bezel around the edge, a UV mesh to cut the hole, and a skin mesh to give you a non-conforming headlight fixture. If that sounds confusing, don't worry, it gets worse. Just watch the video for more. The eighth video in this series covers how to make a rim mod. Rims are probably my favorite thing to make, and I will introduce you to lots of tools in Blender you might not have used before, but it's okay. The video covers just how to make it all work. So, if you are totally new to 3D modeling, you need some foundational knowledge before you bother with my videos. My tutorials expect you already possess knowledge of Blender, so if you lack that knowledge, don't worry. I'm going to link some YouTube video tutorials from Yan Sculpts, Blender Guru, and CG Boost in the video description below. Any or all of them will familiarize you with Blender in such a way that you should be able to follow along. My next piece of advice would be don't start with a car body. Car bodies are hard and very time consuming, and there's a lot more to them than just, I have a car shaped thing. If you have the expectation that you can watch tutorials for a day and start making car bodies for automation, you are going to be frustrated and disappointed. I recommend you start with a simple conforming mesh fixture like a vent or a grill, then move on to some additional mesh fixtures, then some headlights or taillights. You will learn things in all of those processes that will make building a car body easier. So anyway, enough with the gatekeeping, let's move on. Before we download any programs, I recommend you create a folder on your C drive, or any other drive on your PC, as long as it's on the root level of the drive, for all of your modding and or game development needs. This can become important because the file path name lengths can become too long and can break mods, or cause mods not to cook, and a whole host of other game engine related issues that are not really necessary to go into depth with here. It's just easy to have all your programs and tools in one place, and it will ensure you don't end up with problems. You will need to move the automation project out of the SDK folder anyway, so putting that into a folder here, like I have, C, Dev, Unreal, I've copied the whole automation game folder from the SDK, which has a project inside of it here, but I'll cover the specifics of that later. Let's get on to getting the tools we need, assuming you don't already have them. All of my tutorials will be done in Blender 2.8 and beyond. As of this video, the current most stable version is 2.82a, which you can download from blender.org. 
Just download the latest stable version and launch the executable to install it like you would any Windows application. Before I move on, I'll briefly cover the startup file I use, which is made public to you, and I'll put a downloadable Google Drive link in the video description, but this file has a materials key, which contains all the materials you should ever need to make any fixture, rim or car body mod in Blender. All you need to do when you're working on a fixture is add a material, then select something like Panel 1 or Opaque Glass 2 from the materials list. Doing this will set it up so that when you import your game objects into Unreal Engine, it already has the material fields filled out with the correct names. The file also contains a wheel template for measuring out rims, and that's covered in depth in the Rim Mod tutorial video. There also exists a base bounds box level for car bodies, which again is covered more in my car body modeling series. And one last thing, if you have the means or you make money like I do from the use of Blender, give a little back by contributing monthly to the Blender Development Fund. Recently, the fund has received tremendous grants from the likes of Epic Games, AMD, NVIDIA, Ubisoft, Steam, Google, Intel, and Tangent Labs, which made the movie Next Gen in Blender. But nonetheless, small donations make a huge difference, and the development of Blender has accelerated rapidly in the past couple of years, and new features that we are seeing from sculpting to mantle flow are really changing the game and turning Blender into a true premium 3D modeling suite. Or just get yourself a mug or a t-shirt from the Blender store. Also, you can subscribe to the Blender Cloud, which has really helpful training tools and courses to help you master Blender and makes available tons of assets that are free to use. Anyway, moving on. Now we need Unreal Engine, which we will get from unrealengine.com. As of the making of this video, we are moving to version 4.24.3, and it's currently in use in open beta, but will be on the stable branch within the next week or two. So I'm going to go ahead and jump the gun a little bit and make this video now. You will need an Epic account, which you will sign into, get the launcher, and install version 4.24.3. The launcher isn't exactly intuitive, so here's how it works. With the launcher open, click on the Unreal Engine on the left side, then navigate over to the Library tab at the top. From there, you can push the plus icon, which will add an instance to your library, then click on this little down arrow to add the appropriate version of Unreal Engine, which again is 4.24.3. So now we need to get our tools from Steam, which include the Automation Project and the Workshop Publisher. If I'm not mistaken, these days the tools are downloaded automatically. To find them in the current Steam UI, you need to make sure you have tools available, and if it's not installed, install the Game Workshop tool. It will install in the same location as the Automation Game, which will be the Drive Letter, Steam, Steam Apps, Common. From there, you will find the Automation SDK folder. Open up that folder and copy the Automation Game folder and paste it to the development folder we made earlier. You can also copy and paste this workshop publishing tool so it's easier to find. When there are future updates, the SDK will be updated automatically, but the version you copied to your dev folder won't be, so you'll need to manually update your Automation Game folder from time to time. I recommend keeping old SDK versions in another folder, in case you need to come back to a project and you're having compatibility issues, or you simply forgot an old project. Copying the Automation Game folder and moving it somewhere else is a must. The Automation project won't work properly if it's being opened from its original location. So hey, that will cover it for this video. In the upcoming videos, I'll walk you through making a grill, then a bumper, then a headlight, and a rim. If you found this video helpful, give it a like and hit the subscribe button if you haven't already. And make sure to click the bell icon so you get a notification every time I release a new video. Pretty soon, I'll be doing a series of Blender quick tips, which will be useful to anyone using Blender, even pros, where I'll make you aware of useful features, tools, or hotkeys you may not know about. Anyway, thanks for watching, and I'll see you on the next one.